New Balance has been quietly winning. In 2023, the company's revenues spiked 23% to $6.5 billion, and $1 billion of that was just from apparel, marking the first time in the company's history that they hit the $1 billion mark with just their clothing. StockX, an online sneaker marketplace, reported that in 2023, New Balance was the only brand in their top 10 fastest growing brands list and their top 10 best selling sneakers list. It's clear to see that New Balance sneakers are hot. But how did they go from an uncool dad shoe brand to one of the hottest brands out there? Hey, what's up guys? I'm Eli and today we're going to be talking about the rise of New Balance. I know that when we're on the hunt for a nice pair of kicks, the first thing we look at is price and authenticity. So today I'm going to be legit checking my Nike Stussy Airfly 89s using Poison. Poison is a cutting edge online shopping platform offering an extensive collection of sneakers and clothing. Use my code on the screen to get 10% off your Poison sneaker purchase. Not just that, but you guys can also get a completely free legit check by clicking the link down in the description. The free legit check applies to all categories, clothing, sneakers, bags, everything. Poison supports 350 plus brands, including Nike, Jordan, and Gucci, and they support over 100,000 different items on their platform, so you guys can legit check your closet with confidence. Legit checking your sneakers is a super easy two-step process, and like I mentioned before, I'm gonna be legit checking my Nike Stussy Airfly 89s. All you guys gotta do is select your brand. In my case, it's Nike. Then you upload a couple photos, and just like that, you're done. The results are then sent directly to your email address and I got my results in just two minutes. And here are my results guys, as you guys can see, they are legit. So don't be shy guys, if you're on mobile, you can click that link down in the description and get started on your free legit check. And remember guys, use my code on the screen in order to get 10% off your Poison sneaker purchase. And thanks again to Poison for sponsoring this video. Just a couple years ago, nobody was wearing New Balances. They were the boring old shoe brand that your dad wore. The only crowd of people wearing them were the old white guys with Corvettes and jean shorts. Well, at least that was the image. And that image was made worse when in 2016, they encountered a bit of controversy. In 2016, Donald Trump exploded onto the scene while running for president. He'd rather have a puppet as president of no the puppet, United States. No puppet. And it's pretty clear. You're the pop he immediately became one of the most divisive public figures on the planet. You either loved him or you hated him. So it came as a shock when New Balance became the first major sportswear company to publicly back Donald Trump. In a statement, New Balance said that the Obama administration turned a deaf ear to us and frankly, with President-elect Trump, we feel that things are going to move in the right direction. It was also revealed that in 2017, Jim Davis, owner and chairman of New Balance, donated nearly $400,000 to the Trump campaign. But it had me thinking, what, what was the reason that they backed Trump and had a disdain for the Obama administration? Well, it goes back to the Trans-Pacific Partnership that the Obama administration pushed. The TPP is a trade deal that lowers tariffs on footwear imports and would hurt New Balance's line of American-made sneakers. New Balance is one of only a couple companies that still produces sneakers in the United States on a large scale. And it's been one of the only sneaker brands that opposes the TPP. So it kind of makes sense that New Balance would support the Trump president. Presidency. One of his first actions in office was to pull out of the TPP. Now, this obviously led to a PR nightmare for the company. People were throwing away their New Balances, burning them, and were calling for boycotts. A spokesperson for New Balance clarified their position on the Trump presidency, saying that the statement is correct in the context of trade, not talking about large geopolitical anything, but in context of the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement. Essentially saying that the only reason that they back Trump is specifically for his anti-TPP stance. With time, New Balance was able to position itself as a platform for everyone, which really helped it get away from the pro-Trump ties in 2016. And since many consumers didn't really care for the controversy, New Balance was able to get back to focusing on sneakers. Collaborations are important for any brand, and New Balance is no stranger to them. But New Balance did not have a dedicated team to handle collaborations. They were always handled by a person who either managed the silhouette or whoever was closest to the brand. But all that changed when, in 2017, Brian Land, general manager of Lifestyle, and Joe Gromsland, business unit manager of Global Collaborations and Energy, long title I know, teamed up to launch their new strategy. They ensured that collaborations from the product to the marketing were more tailored to them. They gave more freedom to collaborators. They reached out to under-the-radar brands 
brands, and more importantly, they establish a collaborations team. And with this strategy, they saw their audience grow. The timing could not have been better because 2018 saw the rise of the dad shoe trend. Popular dad shoes like the Nike Monarchs or the New Balance 990 V4s with their ugly, chunky silhouettes suddenly became cool and desirable. So naturally, New Balance being known for their dad shoes was perfectly positioned for the influx. They carried that momentum into the following years and had so many successful collaborations with names like Emilion Dor, Joe Fresh Goods, Salihi Bembery, Jound, and so many other high energy collaborators. They really started cooking. The 2019 collaboration with Emilion Dor, a rising lifestyle brand, consisted of a two pack, a 990 V2, and a 990 V5. It proved so successful that the NYPD had to shut down the in-store release because of the commotion from the crowd lineup outside its store on Mulberry Street in Nolita. That same year, they signed NBA player Kawhi Leonard, who at the time played for the Toronto Raptors. He became the leading face of New Balance's performance basketball sneakers. Another successful Emilion Dor collaboration was the ALD 550. This collaboration helped put the 550 on the map as a staple shoe in the New Balance catalog. So much so that in 2022, StockX revealed that out of the top 10 best-selling New Balance sneakers on the platform, seven of them were general release 550s, a definitive hit. Joe Fresh Goods' collaboration also helped increase the presence of the brand, especially in his hometown of Chicago. His 992 No Emotions Are Emotions sneaker drop in 2020 brought out locals who lined the block hoping to get their hands on one of the roughly 800 pairs of shoes that were made. People took to social media and said that they had never heard of people lining up for New Balance sneakers. And Joe actually put it on a t-shirt. Put them on a t-shirt. The Sleehy Bembury collaboration on the 574 showcased the freedom that they gave collaborators. As Bembury put a whole whistle on the back of the 574. Jown, known for his simplistic but tasteful collaborations, also helped further the brand to a new audience. Other collaborators like Moa Lola's 9060, Casablanca's 327, and Miu Miu's 574s put New Balance on the runway during Paris Fashion Week. They also attached themselves to celebrities like Jack Harlow and Jaden Smith. All of these high energy collaborations really helped drive the demand to the retail level, with shoes like the 990, the 327, and the 550 leading the charge. With the Nike sneakers app being the hottest thing in the early 2020s, it also came with a lot of frustration, as the constant L's that people were taking on the app to botters and resellers led people to other smaller brands like New Balance, Asics, and Hoka. Brands that actually made consumers feel like they wanted them. Nike took note of New Balance's growing momentum, and in an internal meeting that Complex leaked back in October 2021, it revealed that Nike was aware and growing worried of losing customers to smaller independent brands like New Balance because of the frustration with the Nike sneakers app. Chris Davis, New Balance's chief marketing officer and senior vice president of merchandising, says that he's only worried about improving the brand and not going toe-to-toe with its competitors. While we have a tremendous amount of respect for all of our competition we're just not concerned with our competition we carve our own path says davis and it's definitely been working All of the success has translated into hard numbers for the company. In 2017, New Balance's revenue was $4 billion. By 2022, they had reached $5.3 billion. And the following year, in 2023, their revenues reached $6.5 billion. This represents a 20% growth of the company in 2023. They now estimate that in the next couple of years, they will hit $10 billion in revenue. They also now have over 350 athlete and entertainment ambassadors. They are also now getting ready to open up 90 new stores in 2024, along with remodeling 50 existing stores. One of the most striking pieces of data that was revealed in 2023 was the fact that out of all the consumers who shopped online through newbalance.com, 63% of them were first-time buyers. Hard confirmation that their marketing strategy that they devised years ago is absolutely working. Thanks so much for watching guys, I really appreciate it. Drop a like, hit the subscribe button, comment down below, and let me know if you have any other topics for interesting videos to make, like this one. As always guys, I'll see you in the next one, peace.